Hello everyone and welcome back to our channel or our Facebook page. So glad that you are here. Today's video is going to be a listicle of the top 10 challenge books of 2020 in honor of Band Book Week that is starting September 26th and ends October 2nd. I believe those are the dates. If those are not the dates, they will be here. So the American Library Association receives hundreds of books that are challenged, uh, challenged at local libraries, universities, schools, what does that mean? That doesn't mean the books are challenging literacy wise. It just means someone is complaining about this book because they have nothing else to complain about. And so therefore these books are challenged. And then some of those books become banned in those communities. So I thought I will share with you guys the top 10 books that were most challenged in 2020. I feel like if I look really tired today, it's because I am. But let's get into this. Now, some of these books that are challenged, I have to agree with them being challenged because they do have some outdated messaging and some very insensitive messaging. But for the most part, most of these books are challenged for really stupid reasons because people are stupid. We all know those people that complain. Basically, it's like that PTA parent that you literally want to shut the fuck up, but they don't want to shut the fuck up. Those are the people. So number one, top challenge book is, and if I could keep looking this way, it's because my notes are here. George by Alex Gina. It is challenged and banned and restricted for LGBTQI content, conflicting with a religious viewpoint, and not reflecting the values of our community. When I do quotation marks, it's because the text is in quotation mark. For me, I'm just like, really? <laughs> what community is that? Like, that's... Okay, so you're saying your community has no queer people whatsoever. All right, sure. Moving on. Number two, Stamped Racism, Anti-Racism, and You by Abraham X, Kendi, and Jason Reynolds. All right, this is banned and challenged and because of the author's public statements and because of claims that the book contains selective storytelling incidents, there we go, and does not encompass racism against all people. I personally haven't read this book, but I've been wanting to read it because it does discuss racism, but it's a middle school, it's a young, I don't even want to say it's a young adult book. I feel like it's a little bit younger than that. And I, and I appreciate that because I feel like there needs to be more books addressing those type of issues geared towards a younger audience and being able to be written for that audience and not talking down to them, but talking with them. So it's on my TBR, to be honest. But I love how it's like selective storytelling incidents. Well, if you're the author, I think you have the choice to decide which books you want to or what stories you want to tell. All right. Number three, <laughs> All American Boys by Jason Reynolds and Brenda Kelly. Ban and challenge for profanity, drug use, and alcoholism, and because it is thought to promote anti-police views, contain diverse topics and too much of a sensitive matter right now. I feel like everything that they're complaining about about this book was probably, you know, what we need to talk about in 2020, what we did talk about in 2020. And I just love when people are like, it has anti-police views and it has profanity and drug use. It's like, I'm 100% sure your child knows that there is drug use. <laughs> people use drugs, people curse, people have sex, people don't like the police, like, and we are aware of that so these authors should be able to write about that and also i don't when it says anti-police views just like you can't say the police are a hundred percent good and a hundred percent nice to everyone that is disgusting and extremely insensitive it's not and so when you live in a community that's always targeted by the police of course you're going to write about that because that is your story and that should be shared and people should know that. I don't know why people get all up in arms about this. I'm telling you this list is just like giving me, ugh, making me hate all the Karens in the world. All right, number four, Speak by Lori Hulse Anderson. Banned, challenged, and restricted because it was thought to contain a political viewpoint it was claimed to be biased against male students and it included rape and profanity. So I was interested in reading this book and I was like, what makes this bias and gets male students? And then there's also rape in it. 
And really, it's the story of the main character. She gets raped and basically just how she deals with it. So, the only criticism I read on Goodreads that I could agree with, I could sort of see, I haven't read the book, was that maybe it didn't include everyone's rape story. That the topic was relevant, but the author didn't do a great job presenting that topic. That I could get behind. I'm like, okay, if you agree that this topic needs to be talked about, but maybe it could have been done better, I can agree with that. But the fact that you are challenging this book just for the sheer fact that it has rape in it, and that it's a male character raping a female character, and somehow in your mind you think that's going against male students, I don't, like... That makes no sense to me. <laughs> like, rape happens and it needs to be discussed because that is probably one of the first things, one of the first challenges, I don't even want to say challenges, but incidents or real world issues that that student is probably going to face the second they go off to college or move out, away from home or probably even high school, right? That is something that's going to come to them, whether that happens whether rape or sexual assault happens to them or happens to a friend or family, it does happen. And it's good to talk about it and it's good to promote healthy ways of healing, healthy ways of talking about sex, the consent, all of that. So I don't understand why people are challenging a book that has rape in it. Like... Number five, The Absolute True Diary of a Part-Time Indian by Sherman Alexi. Reasons, ban and challenge for for profanity, sexual references, and allegations of sexual misconduct by the author. I don't know too much about this book, and I really don't know too much about this author. Um, I don't think the book should be challenged because it has profanity or sexual references again. I think those are topics and themes that need to be in a book. But I do see if the, if the author has unfortunately done any kind of sexual assault or sexual misconduct maybe don't have this book as required reading and probably don't promote it as much but definitely like basically by promoting that much maybe don't put it on the first shelf of your library maybe it should still be in the library all right number six something happened in our town a child story about racial injustice by maureen salino marinto collins and ann hazard illustrated by jennifer Sivon. Reasons, challenge for device language, and because it was thought to promote anti-police views. Anytime it says it's thought to promote anti-police views, automatically I'm thinking that person's hella stupid, and I don't like that person, and I hope I never meet that person again in my life. Um, the next two books, I have to agree why they're on the challenges. Like I said, some of these books that are on the, ch on the challenge list are challenged for legitimate reasons, but just being outdated. You know, they were written a while, some time ago, and just their depictions of certain communities are just not, they weren't right then, and they are not right now. And so it makes sense that these books are challenged. Number seven, To Kill a Mockingbird by Harper Lee. Reasons, ban and challenge for racial slurs and negative effects on students, featuring a white savior character and perception of the black experience. Couldn't agree more, that book definitely has a white savior complex. Uh, white savior character um it was i believe required reading when i was in high school and i was in high school in the early 2000s but um i do believe it should be read but for if you want to read it for your own pleasure so that way you can see how media in the world view the black experience from then to now see the progress see maybe the regress all of that just for your own knowledge but i do not believe it should be required anymore because of the reasons i just said number eight of mice and men by john steinbach again another book that i totally agree is a little outdated so it probably shouldn't be on any required list reasons ban and challenge for racial slurs and racial stereotypes and their negative effects on students again i think reading some of the classics like john steinbach his writing though is very dry just fair warning. It is very dry. Um, but just to see where we were then to where we are now, but not making it required anymore. Again, it's not inclusive to everyone. The last two most challenged books of 2020 make me laugh because they should not be challenged whatsoever. And they are, I consider them modern classics, recent classics, if you will. 
So let's all have a giggle because the Karens in the world just wanted to complain. Number nine, The Bluest Eye by Toni Morrison. Why on God's green earth are you challenging the great Toni Morrison? Like I don't, I don't understand what's wrong with you in your life. Are you sick? Do you need help? I don't know what's going on. But the reasons why this book was challenged and banned is because it was considered sexually explicit and depicts child sexual abuse. Child sexual abuse does happen. I'm sorry, it does. I don't know what world you live in where you think child sexual abuse does not happen. And so the fact that you are saying that this book shouldn't be read, I don't know if it was challenged more in libraries or universities or schools, like high schools, middle schools, but if you are challenging it because you don't want your child, by child, I probably think like high school or kid, to read this book because that's child sexual abuse in it, then that's more on you and like your parenting because you need to be comfortable be able to talk about those things with your kid because it does happen. And the fact that you just want to shelter your kid forever, bad parenting. And I just, but also if you're banning this from like your local library, who are you to tell other people what they can and cannot read? I feel like, hello. People always want to tell people what they can and cannot do. I'm talking to you, Texas. All right, number 10. This one, I was like, really? Okay. Number 10, I love this book and I haven't seen the movie because I know the movie's gonna make me cry because the book made me cry. But I heard good things about the movie too. And the author, I got to hear her speak one time. She's really sweet. But anyways, number 10, The Hate You Give by Angie Thomas. I know. How, why would you challenge that book? Well, let me tell you. It was challenged for profanity and it was thought to promote anti-police messaging. Again, the police are not kind to everyone. There are bad police officers out there. If you don't get that, I don't know what world you're living in. I just, like, do you not watch the news? Like, I think we are all aware that there's going to be bad police officers. Why? Because we're human beings and there are bad human beings. And some of those bad human beings get into professions that should require them to not be a bad human being. But that's what happens. And these police officers are racist and they target certain groups and they have their biases. Those groups tend to be more often not people of color and more often than not black people. And the fact that you're thinking no one should ever write about that is beyond me. And then also, I feel like, did you not read the book? A lot of these like claims, I felt like you didn't read the book. I think you read the back cover of the book and maybe saw some headlines and then that's it. Which just to be honest, that's what most people do. Because if you read that book, yes, she, the main character sees her friend get killed by a police officer. And it's all about what she's dealing, how she deals with that. You don't get like, and me personally, maybe because I'm just a better human being than this person that challenged this book. It's like, I was not getting anti-police views whatsoever. I was getting like, you need to challenge the system when the system isn't working for you and you live in that community and you pay taxes and they're not doing anything for you. You need to challenge it because I don't know about you guys, but I would love it if police officers, I don't know, for shit and giggles, don't kill children and don't kill young black men. Like, I don't know. That's where I want my tax dollars to go, but that's just me. <laughs> Call me crazy. Those were the top 10 challenge books of 2020. Feel free to look at this list and laugh at how stupid your fellow human beings are. And if you want, you could actually go to the American Library Association.org and they have a list of the most top challenge books of all time. Again, that's also fun to read because again, it just reminds you that people have nothing else to do with their time but to complain and to tell you what you can read. But you know, people like to tell other people what they like to do. Again, Texas, I'm talking about you. You need to get your shit together. All right. And I can say that because I have a lot of people that live in Texas that I know. <laughs> so this one's a little sassy today, guys. But, oh, one more thing. So in honor of Band Book Week 
in of all the challenge books out there. I have actually picked up a copy of The Bluest Eye by Toni Morrison because I have not read it. I don't know why. I don't know what I was doing with my life. So I'm going to read it and, you know, I'll let you know my stories if it, how much child abuse it has in it. But then again, I'm an adult and I'm aware of the fact that there is child sexual abuse happening in the world and it's okay to read about it so you have a more perspective on it. But, you know, that's just me. All right. So celebrate Band Book Week by reading one of the books that are the most challenged. You know, don't let people tell you what you can and cannot read. I mean, don't read like racist stuff, like be a decent human being, but don't let people take literature away from you. Read different books, read different perspective, read from different types of authors. Don't always read from people that look like you. That's like, why do that? So all of that good stuff. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I know today was a little sassy today, but it's Sunday. I'm a little tired and I'm allowed to be sassy. And also this is, you know, my channel and my business. So see you guys around. Talk to you guys later. Bye.